Okay, number seven on the 12 things of anime. This might be a cheat, but I'm just gonna go and say the Ogi and Valletta subplot from Code Gas. I was in a love-hate relationship with this aspect of Code Gas because a part of me wanted it to succeed, but then the other part of me was like, this doesn't matter to the plot. It was frustrating because it was irrelevant, but then it was fun because it was such a... <laughs> interesting aspect to the show to look at it in such a way. It added this little Romeo and Juliet with amnesia aspect. <laughs> Every time this subplot got screen time, I I did get excited because Ogi was probably my favorite character. Um, and even though I was kind of lukewarm about Valletta, leaning towards disliking her, I wanted Ogi to succeed so badly that it was okay. Uh, at this point, I've only actually seen up to episode 49 of Code Yes, so I don't know how it concludes, which is kind of driving me a little crazy, but I'm sure whatever it is, <laughs> it will be satisfying to a degree. Anyway, you can enjoy my continued attention to the Ogi and Valletta sublot after the fade, and I'll see you tomorrow for the eighth moment. So please join me. Bye! Ogi is hanging out with Valletta. And what about the Ogi and Valletta situation? I've said this already, but the Valletta and Ogi subplot really pissed me off. What the Ogi and Valletta subplot? Now it's become somewhat of a staple of my reviews to talk about something regarding the Ogi and Valletta subplot. Now for Ogi and Valletta, because we can't wrap up without talking about them. Okay, I know I said I'd never talk about Ogi and Valletta again, but seriously, seriously!